I actually just got an amazing idea and whether or not this works is going to depend on if these guys want to go for our choke point or not because we ended up walling in the entire base and there actually is a path that they can go to get into our base. They're just going to have to go all the way around over here and I don't know if they're going to want to do that. We can make it so there's a quicker way into our base that does not involve going through our choke point. It may not be a more safe way for the raiders, but it is quicker. Welcome to episode 3 of the Gunny vs. the Tribes people, and currently we're on day 25 with about 65k wealth, which is a fairly considerable amount. If we do end up getting raided by mechanoids, there could be quite a lot of them. One of our main goals this episode is going to be to recruit all these prisoners, and Shiro's going to take quite some time with 70 resist, wires at 65, limbers at 42, and the rest of them are around 30. These Prisoners for the most part are really good though. Is this the moment we've all been waiting for? Goat is going to recruit needles or at least going to try. She is very persuasive though with her massive amount of social. She's up to 18 social now and she has a lot of social impact because she's wearing that hat. 7% chance? Even with her mood being low, 7% chance? Really? I guess it's because her recruitment difficulty is 97%. Does that have something to do with it? I didn't think recruitment difficulty actually did anything. I thought it was just a measure of how much resist they have. Okay, that's actually going to be really hard. We need to clean up her prison cell. And we need to feed her. Apparently, she's really hungry. She's got 97 recruitment difficulty. What about Shiro and Wires, who both have 99% recruitment difficulty? Lewis is going to be rough, too, with his 90%. Oh, man. I was all happy because we recently teamed up this female brontosaurus. And I was like, ooh, we can mate it with our male brontosaurus. But it's actually a male brachiosaurus and apparently they don't want to mate which like they look pretty similar i feel like they definitely could they're just not feeling it i guess which is kind of unfortunate it'd be really nice to breed these things we could use them as combat animals we could sell them off or we could slaughter them for meat and leather and ooh, is that no I thought the Brachiosaurus was making his move, but nah. We apparently ran out of meals, and Romford decided to eat raw food, which was like, I think there was three people that ate raw food, and there's a 2% chance of them getting food poisoning. He got it. But Brexio now has two out of three in disease knowledge, and she can cure food poisoning. She has a good amount of mana too, so if the first one does fail, we should be able to make it work on the second attempt. And yeah, it was successful. He is completely cured of food poisoning. That's amazing. Food poisoning is one of the more annoying things to deal with. It doesn't kill people, but yeah, it just makes their productivity really small. Okay, Needles is in a really good mood because there's a psychic soothe going on right now for all females. And let's see if that's going to help our recruitment chance. 18% failed. Oh, come on, game. And we just had three baby Gigantilopes born pretty much all at the same time. We currently have three female Gigantilopes and one lucky male who has all these three females to himself. He has quite the harem going on. I think the idea with these new Gigantilopes is we're probably going to end up slaughtering them as they do drop a lot of meat and leather. 180 meat and 60 heavy for leather is pretty good. Calves do not drop that much though. We have to raise them into full grown adults. And yeah, he's just getting it on nonstop with these female gigantilopes. Dude is living the good life. And ooh, it looks like Needles ended up joining us. Her mood's still really good because of the Psychic Soothe, and I'm guessing it was around a 20% chance, if not higher. Which, like, I mean, we've been attempting to recruit every day, so it was just a matter of time. We're now going to have someone just non-stop taming and training animals, which is nice because we haven't really been able to tame new ones. We've just been really busy with Brixo lately, and we've been having to have him pretty much garden full-time. I don't know if I want to use the Psychic Awakening Serum on Needles, or if I want to wait for, like, Lewis to join us. Because though Lewis does have really good traits, he doesn't really have any outstanding skills that are all that amazing. He's going to join us relatively soon as well. He's only got 16.2 resist left. He does have a 90% recruitment difficulty though, but that still should be like a 30% chance each time we talk to him. Assuming when we do break his resist, we give him a good room. Or we could even keep him in this room. It's a somewhat impressive barrack, and we put a lot of Christmas chairs in here and stuff. Overall, this is a very festive room, and we got a couple excellent chairs in here by the way, which are giving off 27 beauty. This red one's excellent, and this red one is as well. A pack of man-hunting great devourers have entered the area. They will roam the region hunting for humanoid flesh. There are a lot of these things. On the bright side though, they're really slow. They move at 2.8. It looks like Dora Banch is going to be able to get away. She almost got our wall finished too. Unfortunately, did not quite get it finished. Alright, well here they come. And we already injured this one. Which is good. Whoa, that one's already dead? They have a lot of armor. Maybe we got a good vital hit on it. Apparently we shot off one of its body segments. We ended up downing another one in our maze and oh we just killed another one. Looks like these things are not posing much of a threat. And yeah, another one down. But yeah, it looks like they're all dead. And they drop 180 meat as well as 60 leather. Alright, well, after butchering all the great devourers, we got a ton of extra meat. A lot of this insect chitin, which apparently is relatively strong material. It gives 112% armor. We're going to grab all that great devourer meat. And I 
think we might want to grab the insect chitin too. It's just so much material that's sitting around our base, just increasing our wealth. What is this guinea pig fur still doing around here? Did we not sell this off? We've also been mass producing herbal medicine. We're going to grab like half of this. It actually sells for quite a lot. And as we were leaving, a psychic ship just crashed. It's putting a low psychic drone over our colony. And the longer we wait to take it out, the worse and worse that psychic drone's gonna get. I think we're gonna go out on the trade mission first and grab all that devour meat and all the chitin, as well as some silver. And we're gonna try to trade with a new colony and hopefully they might have some longer distance decent guns. Cause right now our long range guns are just not all that good. Our caravan is heading over to combo and they're moving really fast. They're going at 101 tiles per day due to the fact that Goat and Romfer are mounted and we brought along all of our quickest animals. We're gonna hit up this colony and if they don't have anything good, we'll head over to Crosbyton and we'll see if they have anything. Meanwhile, we're gonna have Thor and Membo check out this psychic ship and we don't wanna get too close because if we get right up next to it, it will disturb it and the mechanoids will pop out. But I do wanna get about as close as we can to it and we're gonna lay a poison trap right here. I think we could have probably got a little bit closer, but I don't wanna risk it. And yeah, we're gonna have Thor just open fire on this thing. And he is not very accurate with that bow. There he goes. Holy cow, there are some seriously powerful mechanoids in here. They did spring the trap. We're gonna drop another trap right here. And I think it dropped. Maybe not. Okay, we got one of their crawlers. These things are really quick. We gotta knock these out ASAP. Anti-armor on this one. Got it. And then headshot on the scullywag. Okay, I think it did some damage to it. A running gun needs to be on, by the way. Running gun was not on for Membo. That was a big mistake. Dude is beastly, by the way. We gave him three out of three in sniper training, which costed six points, but he gets a lot more accuracy, less aiming delay, and more movement. And the dude is now a combat beast. He is going to be hitting shots from a long ways away. We could probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Lancers and just duel them out. They don't have that much accuracy, I think. Anti-armor on this one. Anti-armor does really well against mechanoids. I don't know if we want to get too close to those centipedes, though. The centipedes don't have much range. If they get close, they will just obliterate us, but if we just keep our distance, we should be okay. And it looks like the caravan arrived at combo. At combo, they actually have a lot of prisoners for sale. Smokey's a brawler, which gives him more melee skill, more melee hit chance. And he has 12 in melee. We don't really have anyone that's really all that dedicated to melee. And to top it off, he's also an enchanter, which I don't really know what enchanters do, but I feel like that could potentially be really good. Let's see how much money we're working with here. If we sell them all the chitin, that's 900. The guinea pig fur and the herbal medicine, that brings us up to 1200. Will they buy our meat? They will not buy our devour meat, oh no. And they don't really have any good weapons that we need. I think we're gonna hit up Crosby Tenant and we'll see if they have any really decent weapons. Back at the base, we got two centipedes left and two lancers, which the main things I'm worried about are the lancers. We're gonna drop an anti-armor on this one and Thor is gonna drop an arrow storm on this one. Okay, never mind. he's getting too close. He got tagged. One shot did so much damage to him. One shot to the torso did 30 damage to him, and I guess that was actually from the charge lance. That was not even from the centipedes. We're gonna have Thor drop an arrow storm, but after that, we're probably just gonna have him run. Oh no, 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 no. Too close, too close. I think Memo can finish these guys off. Anti-armor on the lancer, and he's dead. And, ooh, that was actually really close pretty much grazed him. But yeah, he's got these centipedes on farm status. There's no way they can even catch up to him. They do have some armor though, so it will take some time to get them all down. All right, we got the last Lancer down. It's just these centipedes left, and this one's pretty injured. That one's down. This one's about to go down too. It's really low HP. It's gotta be going down soon. Holy cow, this thing is not wanting to go down. Okay, well we wounded this thing so much, it's HP. Okay, there it finally goes. Meanwhile, Goat's Caravan arrived at Crosbyton. They'll buy all of our meat for 1600, and holy cow, these guys are loaded. They have 10K. Well, they don't really have any long range guns that we need, but we will take all that silver. We currently only really have one person that's able to really do any combat, and that's Needles. So we're gonna have her finish off this psychic ship. This is gonna take some time, but she will eventually get through it. I just hope it drops another one of those psychic abilities. That would be pretty cool. 
cool because yeah the last ship part did drop one and meanwhile goat's caravan arrived back at combo smeagol is one of their slaves he's greedy and he's a nudist okay that is definitely 100 percent a premier character in the mod so if you think about it smeagol always wanted the ring so he's greedy and he never had clothes on so he's a nudist i'm just kind of weirded out at his skills though he has zero in melee which i don't think it's right smeagol should have some decent melee and why does he have 12 cooking he never cooked his food he would always eat it raw Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I think we will pick him up though. We could always use an extra cook and we just have to give him a nice room. He's also pretty cheap too. He's only 670 bucks. So yeah, let's pick him up. We're also gonna grab Smokey the Shaman who was really good at melee and he's the enchanter. Also, he's got a minor passion for intellectuals. So when we're not fighting, we can have him do research and we can build an extra research bench for him. Meanwhile, back at base, Needles ended up breaking through the ship and there is a insanity psychic engram, which apparently can make an opponent go berserk. Sometimes when you get attacked, there's a couple of really elite enemies and we could use it on them. All right, Goat and Smokey made it back to base, and Smokey starts out with enchant weapon, which can enchant someone's melee weapon. That's actually really good for him because he's a brawler and he's got a lot of melee skill, so he can enchant his own. And Black Hive attack, what is that? Over here, there's five Black Hive mounds, and there's some Mammoth Worms, which I think are really tanky, but they're really slow. And there's some Spilopedes, a Black Spider, and then some of these Black Scarabs. This doesn't look too terrifying. We are going to have to kill these Hive mounds, though, I'm guessing, and they're probably going to keep spawning these insects, so this might actually be a bit difficult, depending on how often they're going to spawn them. All right, well, here the insects come. The Black Scarabs are one-shottable, I guess. Yeah, they're pretty weak. Membo got it. Really nice tag on one too. And the black spiders. Holy cow, we incapacitated that thing really quick. And apparently it's not maddened anymore. It's not attacking us. Okay, yeah, it's attacking us. Wait, it has range? Okay, wait, we gotta take that thing out. Anti-armor on it. Stunned it. And it's dead. And here come the mammoth worms. Oh no, these things are beastly. I don't know if we're even going to be able to take these things down before they even get to our traps just because they have so much armor and we don't have that much DPS. What's this mammoth worm doing? It's going back and forth like it's not sure what to do. And oh, we actually got it down. That wasn't even that difficult. I don't know what happened with the other mammoth worm. It's not attacking us. I was sending everyone back to just resume whatever they were doing because I don't know where the mammoth worm went and it finally got here. I think Membo can just solo it. It's actually not that tanky. Anti armor on it, and yeah, after shooting it for maybe like 10 seconds, it's already at pretty low HP. And we can finish it off. Finish off this spell OP too. And now we gotta go take out those hives. Well, I guess we don't have to finish off these hives. They're gonna last for one and a half more days. And they keep spawning in this black hive insect jelly. Each hive just spawned in 10, so that's 50 total. And it goes for nine bucks a pop. If we do leave these up, they will keep spawning in insects, but they're not really a big deal. We kind of just got them in a farm status right now. Like we can butcher all these insects and the meat's not really that good to eat for humans at least, but we can use it as kibble. And yeah, all these insects actually drop black insect chitin which is super strong material and it goes for 420 a pop and these mammoth worms are going to drop a ton of it i'm guessing yeah i think that was around 90 to 100 black insect chitin so that's really good we're going to turn it on the clothing mainly button down shirts and pants this one was unfortunately normal but even with just the normal quality it gives a lot of armor 35 percent and i believe memo can just put that on well he was already wearing a button down shirt mainly with the button down shirts and pants people are going to put them on underneath stuff like this wooden armor the tab I guess and I think it's the best combo of clothing to have to put underneath armor Membo proposed a lifelong commitment to Ram. Ram agreed and the two are now engaged. Membo and Ram have been getting a lot of love lately for a huge mood boost, but also now they're going to be married, they now get this 10 moodlet boost for Opinion of My Fiance, which even before they were going to get married, they still had Opinion of My Lover, it just gave them less of a mood boost. Toad also ended up joining us and I guess he was the one that gave us the buff earlier because he has this ability Amp. It's got a pretty long cooldown of 10 minutes, but it's an AoE buff and it can hit 5 targets and will make people 30% 
done better in combat. I believe it gave people more movement, I think more manipulation as well, and they take less pain. It's just they get tired quicker. He's also got a couple other damage spells, and I think we're going to learn Lightning Bolt because it only costs one point. The mana cost is also pretty low, and the cooldown is only 20 seconds, so we can start spamming this to get him more XP. And one more thing about Toad is he is a nudist, so he gets this negative three moodlet for having constraining clothes. And so we're just going to have to take all of his clothes off, and I think he'll really enjoy that. Yeah, he gets a 20 moodlet buff for being happily nude. I don't know how our other colonists are going to feel about seeing a 57 year old male nudist walking around, but as long as it's not causing anyone any negative moodlets, then we'll just let him do what he wants. I just don't know if anyone's going to want to ride Gallimimus 1 after he's done riding it. And we finally researched electricity. That took quite some time, but we now have two research benches going. Smokey has been doing research because he can't really do anything around camp. He does have Aiden Artistic and we could have making art, but Goat is our artist and she has not been making art because she's been doing so much social. She actually is making art as we speak. She's making a steel small sculpture, which I did not realize I was having her make sculptures out of steel. We only want her to make sculptures out of stone blocks and mainly marble blocks as they sell for more. So we'll actually have Thor cut up a bit of marble and the idea is we want her to be making marble statues whenever she's not talking to prisoners. Lately she's been really busy talking to all these prisoners and feeding them and stuff which is why she has 20 social. She's not been able to work on art that much and ooh, we got another new recruit. Frog also ended up joining us and she's really good at combat. 9 shooting 11 melee with burning passions for shooting. She also does have a burning passion for intellectuals so much like Smokey we'll just set her up with her own research bench and when we're not doing any combat she can just help us research full time. Frog unfortunately is slothful so she researches 35% slower. Her research speed is 30% versus Rams is 275%. But once Frog's intellectual gets a bit higher, she will start researching a lot quicker. There is also a way we can reset her traits if we get the right psychic ability. And we might end up doing that because even though she is steadfast, which makes it harder for her to have a mental breakdown, whenever she's researching, she's going to get a 14 moodlet, which is pretty much going to make sure that she's always in a good mood. If we give her a nice chair, she's always going to have full comfort and be extremely comfortable as well. So that will also really help her mood. And speaking of mood a lot of our colonists have this negative five moodlet for minor pain and i was looking at her health tab she has a scar on her brain which is really bad because that lowers her consciousness which affects pretty much everything like her manipulation and that also affects her research speed so right there with that scar she's only researching at 70 percent capacity ram's been getting some level ups and we put three points into efficient healing so that our advanced heal costs less mana it only costs 18 mana now and so when we're fighting she'll be able to crank out five heals and she won't even be oom um. versus before four heals would pretty much make her completely out of mana. It's also really nice that she can use more of these as each time she uses it she gets XP. Speaking of level up she had three so I gave her purify so she can now heal scars. In order for brain scars to be healed at all we need to start putting points into burning purity. With one point it should heal one point of her with one point it actually healed her other scar, it didn't even touch her brain scar so I guess we gotta heal each individually. It is kind of unfortunate that Ram healed Frog's other scar cause that was not affecting her consciousness or her manipulation at all. Which is all we really care about right now, I think it was like a leg scar and we don't really care about her leg. She's not gonna be moving a whole lot unless we're in combat I guess and even then she's not gonna be moving that much, she's mainly just gonna be shooting at people. But yeah that ability costs a ton of mana and it has a cooldown of 10 minutes so we cannot do it very often. Oh, we got an infestation. Holy cow. I'm counting 11 hives in here, and this is what happens if you build under a mountain. I walled this area off, and I was going to kind of use it as a mechanoid graveyard. Just because if these mechanoids are in a walled-in structure, they will not deteriorate over time. And eventually, we can break them down into useful parts like plasteel and I believe components. I thought that maybe if we don't have any buildings in here, then we wouldn't get any infestations, but boy was I wrong. Apparently, all you have to do is wall something that's considered deep under a mountain, which I guess this is. It doesn't really look like it, but there's a tunnel going this way, and then a tunnel going this way. And if we hover over any space in this tunnel, if we look in the bottom left, it says overhead mountain. So that's how we know we're under a mountain. But yeah, man, infestations are crazy. We're only on day 41 with a wealth of about 85K. And I don't even know if wealth has anything to do with infestations. I think it's just because this area is so large, hives can spawn anywhere in this area. And boy, did they spawn. On the bright side though, each hive spawned in 20 insect jelly. We can sell it off for eight bucks a pop. So as long as we can just clear these guys out and they don't inflict any damage, damage on us that could have actually been a pretty good move and we might get some profit off of it. Unfortunately it looks like the Spilopede is tunneling to the left which is not ideal we'd rather have them tunnel out north or east but even though it broke that wall open it looks like they're not really reacting to it. They seem to be pretty content with just being around their hive and wait they're actually tunneling deeper into the mountain. 
That guy just mined a marble chunk for us. How nice of him. I don't know if we want them to mine out this mountain though. It's kind of a natural defense for us. And so I think we're going to clear them out. Smeagol is praying that we can get through this infestation. Since we researched electricity, there's a really nice method we can use to deal with this infestation. I forgot where I saw this on YouTube, but if someone has a link to it, I'll heart the comment below. Essentially though, we're going to mine out a bunch of steel. Okay, hold that thought. We're getting sieged apparently by what looks like a lot of pretty low tier people. They do have some longbows, which are a bit scary. They have 36 range. And like this guy's got a flintlock pistol that doesn't have a whole lot of range. But overall, their equipment looks pretty low tier. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to be sieging us. Maybe they're going to bring a catapult or something. And no, they're not actually sieging us, I don't think. They just sent in a bunch of survival meals, and I guess they're attacking right away. I actually just got an amazing idea, and whether or not this works is going to depend on if these guys want to go for our choke point or not. Because we ended up walling in the entire base, and there actually is a path that they can go to get into our base. They're just going to have to go all the way around over here and i don't know if they're gonna want to do that it looks like they are playing nice and they're not actually gonna go for our wall that's amazing we can make it so there's a quicker way into our base that does not involve going through our choke point it may not be a more safe way for the raiders but it is quicker and that involves toad opening this door he is nude and so hopefully he doesn't get too close to these giant spilopedes and their pincers but yeah we're gonna have him open this door there's no insects nearby they're not chasing what it looks like if all goes according to plan these raiders might end up dealing with this infestation station for us and here they come are they gonna go for it looks like they're not sure oh actually yeah they are jack was just firing at these guys wait maverick is going werewolf mode he just dropped all his clothes and he turned into a werewolf. But yeah, this is actually pretty funny. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to deal with this infestation. There's just too many bugs in here. Like, I don't think they can do it. I wonder if we could have some colonists go in from behind while all this was happening and grab some of this insect jelly. We got Lewis over here with this royal ave, and I didn't even think about this, but let's have Membo actually mount the ave. Okay, wait, the spiders notice us, and they're not having that. Yeah, okay. We'll just let the raiders deal with these things and see what happens. There's no way this is happening, though. Like, there's so many mega spiders still up and it looks like with that they are fleeing now some people did get wounded but none of these guys are really amazing enough to warrant a rescue mission no run holy cow we almost just lost a royal ave to that mega spider that was actually really close these things are not tanky at all it looks like that raid did really end up pissing off these insects though as now they're all going for our main base i don't know what the heck this guy's doing What are you doing, Chief? That is not the play. As we can see, one of the raiders did get a bit smart, and they tried to go for our main base, but needless to say, that didn't end up working out too well for her, and she's pretty dead. The Ave made it back with only one hour left, and Ram will save it, I think. Yeah, it's got four hours now. One more 10, we'll bring it up to... No more injuries, actually. All it needed was two 10s. Very nice, Ram. We just used herbal medicine on it, too. It wasn't even, like, our good medicine. We'll send in the cleanup crew to grab all this insect jelly, and we'll just leave these hives alone, as they might end up producing more insect jelly, or they'll just end up producing more insects, and, yeah, this hive actually just ended up producing another mega spider. We could keep using this hive as our personal base defense. I don't really see a reason why we'd have to clear it out. I guess the reason being is they might eventually tunnel through the mountain, like, when they do get bored, they start tunneling in. Or there's a really cool way to exterminate all these insects without destroying the insect jelly or the hives. What do you guys think we should do? Let me know in the comment section. And before we end the episode, apparently the psychic awakening serum was effective on Lewis and he's now psychic. He now gets 5% more efficiency, which affects his consciousness, his manipulation, and that just helps him do a lot of stuff better, which we don't really care about much because his skills do currently suck. But being that he is a psychic user, there are apparently ways around that. And like, for example, if we down an enemy, we can have him use assimilate and that will give him a bunch of XP towards whatever that enemy has learned. There's also this ego death psychic engram that lewis can learn and we'll be going more into that in the next episode with that i want to thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one